This is the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 1 optimization guide. In this video, I'm going to show you everything I did to get over 1500 FPS on an $850 PC with a Ryzen 5 7600X and a GTX 1080 Ti, so I'm going to try my best to help you boost your FPS by at least 10%, reduce input delay, and help you get rid of those annoying stutters. You guys found my last optimization guide super useful, so here's another optimization guide for Chapter 6, and this time I'm going to keep it super simple, focusing only on the things that actually helped me get up to 1500 FPS. The very first optimization that helped me get up to 1500 FPS is something that you might not expect, and it's a system restore point. After applying hundreds of tweaks to all three of my computers, this allows me to test a ton of optimizations without worrying about losing FPS, because I can just go back to where I was and try a different setting. So first open Fortnite and go to settings. The very first setting you're going to see is window mode. Full screen is great for maxing out your FPS and reducing your input delay, but windowed full screen gives me the best 1% lows, resulting in a much smoother overall experience. So how do you decide between the two? Well, pros like Peterbot and Mr. Savage use windowed full screen, but Muzz and Poyo both use full screen exclusive. So to this day, there really isn't a clear cut answer, you just have to pick whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Next is resolution, and if you chose to stick with windowed full screen, you won't have to worry about this, but if you chose full screen, make sure to set your resolution to your monitor screen size no matter what, even if you feel like your PC can't handle it, because we can fix that issue with the 3D resolution setting in just a second. Next is VSync. A lot of casual players will have this on because screen tearing can be pretty bad at times, but it significantly increases the latency between the frame rendering and you actually seeing the frame. So to get both less latency and less screen tearing, we're going to leave it off and use the next setting just underneath to help fix those screen tears without impacting latency. Now you might be wondering, how could adjusting your frame limit fix screen tearing? Most of the time, screen tearing is caused by mismatched FPS and monitor refresh rate, which usually, but not always, happens on lower-end PCs and lower-end monitors without technology like AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync, so a really easy solution to stop screen tearing is to just cap your FPS. And now you might think I'm giving you bad advice because clearly the clip where I uncap my FPS has higher 1% lows, so obviously uncapping your FPS would be better, right? Well, having uncapped FPS above your monitor's refresh rate simply just creates more frames for the GPU to render, building up a massive queue of frames to display, which means that the images you see on your monitor are delayed. When you have your FPS capped, it syncs much better with your monitor, giving you up to 10 milliseconds of better input delay. However, this is all pretty unimportant nowadays because we can eliminate the render queue whether your frames are capped or not when we use NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, and we'll go much more in-depth with that feature later in this video but uncapped versus capped has been an ongoing argument for years and for a reason. So if you disagree with me, feel free to leave your FPS uncapped. Again, this is a guide to teach you and help you make decisions, not something to be fully replicated. Next is the rendering mode, which is a lot more complicated than it was a couple months ago, because Fortnite recently started to recommend that you switch from performance mode to DirectX 12 to eliminate stutters, which is true, but they forgot to mention several massive problems with the DX12 API. First off, the massive difference in render times compared to performance mode, even with DX12 lowest settings, just make the game absolutely unplayable, especially in build mode. I genuinely could not name a single pro player that plays on DX12 for this exact reason. Secondly, you'll see that the builds in DX12 are incredibly detailed and have a lot of crazy animations, and that's because DX12 meshes are linked to the view distance setting. In fact, a ton of different settings are linked to view distance. You can even see a difference with the hair physics. This means that if you want far view distance, you're forced to turn on high meshes, and if you want low meshes, you can't have far view distance. And on top of that, you'll get a pretty noticeable drop in your FPS lows. So unless your stutters are really that bad, I would recommend performance mode over DX12 pretty much every time, even though Fortnite themselves will disagree with me. For these next 5 graphic settings, you can do whatever you want and still get the same frame rate and latency, they just change how your game and menu look. In graphics quality, the 3D resolution is mainly based on preference. If you need some more FPS, you can drop it down to 70, 60, or 50, but be careful because at a certain point, it has absolutely no effect on your game apart from making things impossible to see. Every other setting should be kept on low apart from view distance, where the lowest I would go is medium, but personally I leave it on far to see items from further away. For the low mesh versus high mesh argument, I had a phase where I really liked high meshes because you can see through fully built pieces, but it does affect your FPS and the animations can often be distracting, so right now I would personally choose low meshes. 
And then for report performance stats, it does have a slight performance hit, so you can turn that off too unless you need it. If you're on an AMD or Intel graphics card, you can skip to the next part of the video, but for Nvidia users, there's one hidden in-game setting that we need to adjust for much better input latency. So go back into your settings, switch your rendering mode to DirectX 11, and restart your game so that we can get access to the DX11 settings. This is because the DX11 settings still impact performance mode, but you can't change these settings on performance mode. I know, it's really strange, but just go back into the settings and scroll down until you see NVIDIA Reflex. Without Reflex, normally the CPU queues frames for the GPU to render so that there's always a few frames ready to output to your monitor, but as you could probably guess, those frames in the render queue will be a bit delayed. So using NVIDIA Reflex on makes that render queue as small as possible. But as long as your computer is powerful enough, this will not affect your FPS at all and will only help you to get better responsiveness. If that works well for you, go ahead and set that to on plus boost. But if either of these settings are causing your game to perform poorly, you can switch it off. And that's it for the DX11 setting, so we can just go back to performance mode. For my AMD gamers, you guys have a similar feature to rival NVIDIA Reflex, but instead of being built into Fortnite, it's in the AMD software. So just open up your AMD software, go into the Gaming tab, then the Graphics tab, and turn Radeon Anti-Lag on. It works best in GPU limited scenarios, so it will work great in Fortnite, but even better in a GPU intensive game like Rise of the Tomb Raider. But just like I said for the Nvidia viewers, test with it on and then off and see which feels best, because input delay reducers like these can sometimes cause FPS dips. Now before we get into the Windows optimizations, I'm going to show you very quickly how to debloat your PC, which is something I do after every Windows update, because debloating is one of, if not the best way to not only make your game perform better, but also make your computer more responsive in general. So to debloat your PC super fast without downloading anything, because nobody likes downloading random shit from YouTube videos, we're going to use the Chris Titus Tech script. So press your Windows key, type in PowerShell, and open it as administrator. Then copy and paste the script from the description into PowerShell and press enter. It will open up CTT and for me it opened up on my second monitor so I'm just dragging it onto my main one so you can see what I'm doing. There are plenty of useful features in here but for now we're just going to go to the tweak section because that's where most of my performance boost comes from. There are a lot of options here but if you just want the most performance in the least amount of time you can simply press standard or minimal at the top then click run tweaks at the bottom and skip to the next chapter of this video. But for the rest of you who want to use the same optimizations as myself, I'm going to show you what settings I personally use. So of course we're going to create a restore point in case anything goes wrong, clear out the temporary files folder, and disable consumer features. If you're on Windows 10, this will be especially important as it will prevent Windows from automatically installing things on your computer, and I'm sure that sounds like something you don't want to happen. Next is disabling Microsoft Telemetry, and in simple terms, Telemetry collects and sends info from your computer to Microsoft to help them improve their software, which is great for them, but it's an invasive process that affects your computer's performance negatively, and I never liked Bill Gates anyways. Next, we're going to turn off Activity History. It sounds pretty harmless, but disabling Activity History helps protect your privacy and makes your PC feel smoother. When it's on, your computer keeps track of the apps you use, websites you visit, and files you open, and this information is uploaded online to your Microsoft account. By turning it off, your computer stops tracking these things, both improving your privacy and reducing unnecessary background tasks. I would also turn off Game DVR. The only reason you would ever need to worry about this is if you play any games downloaded from the Microsoft Store, but if you don't, then turning this off is a no-brainer. Hibernation is a laptop feature, so if you're on desktop, check the box. If you're on a laptop, leave it alone. Disabling Home Group is also a no-brainer, and it's very likely that your version of Windows doesn't even have it installed, but you might as well check the box anyways. This next optimization is a network one, so it's not that important for this video, but I would recommend selecting it as well. Then, disable location tracking. It's not like you're gonna need it. Disable storage sense to free up some CPU cycles. Disable Wi-Fi sense as it's a spying service. Enable end task with right click because it's super useful when one of your apps stop responding. Run disk cleanup to remove your previous Windows updates since you probably haven't done it in a while. Replace PowerShell 5 with 7, and in my case, I'm already on PowerShell 7, so it won't change anything, and disable PowerShell 7 telemetry for the same reasons as Microsoft telemetry. If you've never heard of Recall, then disable it because it's a feature that nobody uses. Set hibernation as default if you're on a laptop, and set services to manual. If you go to your services, all of these services can turn on automatically, but setting them to manual only activates them when you need them, again giving your PC some more performance, and finally to wrap up the essential tweaks, click on Deblow Edge. In the advanced tweaks, I would only recommend disabling Adobe Network Block, Adobe Debloat, disable background apps, and disable Microsoft Copilot. 
In the customized preferences section, you can copy my exact settings if you want your windows to look just like mine. And you might think that we're going to use the ultimate performance power plan, but we're going to use the Vtrol power plan instead, which is still currently the best power plan you can use right now. But just before we get to Vtrol, let's do some Windows optimizations that actually help boost performance, and we're going to start with the advanced system settings. These optimizations are best for low-end PCs because it frees up CPU and GPU resources, and that goes for most of the optimizations in this video to be honest. So press your Windows key and type in advanced. You should see something that says view advanced system settings. Once it shows up, open it and then click on the performance settings at the top there. But if you want the most performance possible, then click on adjust for best performance. But personally, I like to keep these three settings on to make Windows 11 feel pretty much exactly the same without killing my FPS. Once you're done with that, press your Windows key again, type in game mode and press enter. Here you should turn on game mode because all it does is turn off some background processes. While we're here, we might as well click on the graphics settings. In the graphics settings, scroll down and find Fortnite. But if it isn't there, scroll back up, then click on browse. I will leave the Fortnite directory in the description below, and all you have to do is paste it into the search bar. Then select Fortnite client win64 shipping.exe. Fortnite should now be on the list, so click on Fortnite, press options, and select your preferred GPU. Then scroll all the way back up again, click change default graphics settings, and turn on optimizations for windowed games only if you decided to choose windowed full screen like I did. Otherwise, leave it off. If you see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in here as well, turn that setting on too. I can't properly explain what it does in a simple way, but it basically takes some work off the CPU and offloads it onto the GPU, gaining some extra CPU performance which is important since Fortnite mainly relies on the CPU. To free up even more resources for your CPU, we're going to disable core isolation. So press your Windows key, type in core isolation, press enter, and you'll see these two switches. Now I'm not going to lie, I thought I knew what core isolation did, but while reading through this recent Reddit thread, I'm not sure if what I know is accurate anymore. But what I do know is that it's a security feature and that turning these two things off boosted my FPS. I've never had a security issue with any of my computers since I turned this setting off, so I can personally recommend disabling it, though it's probably a good idea to still do a bit of research on it on the side. That's it for the Windows optimizations, now let me show you how to use Vtrol Optimizer and set up the Vtrol power plan, which also happens to be the best power plan you can use right now. And unfortunately, since the servers went down super early tonight at 10pm, I wasn't able to get a Fortnite benchmark to prove that it's the best, but this guy tested it a while back against Corvi's power plan, which is also significantly better than the Ultimate Performance power plan. And I want to be very clear that Vtrol does not sponsor this channel and did not sponsor this video, I just get a small percent if you buy the premium version using my link, so everything in this video, including everything before this point, is all my own thoughts and words. Vtrol is the free optimizing app that I've been recommending since I started taking PC optimization seriously, and the best part is that it doesn't need to run in the background for it to work. This app, along with the power plan, was literally the secret sauce that I used to get 1500 FPS. So to download Vtrol, all you need to do is go to the link in the description and sign in with either an email or Discord account. No matter which one you choose, it will bring you to the official Google website or official Discord website, so all of your accounts will be safe. Once you're signed in, click on the big download button and it will start downloading the setup file. You can even put it into virus total and you'll see that it has one false flag and zero virus detections. If you followed everything throughout this video, you are going to get this error when you try to open Vtrol, and that's because we removed a Microsoft Edge feature that's required for your computer to properly apply the tweaks. So I'm going to put the link to an official Microsoft website to help you reinstall only that part of Microsoft Edge. If you get any other type of error, I'll leave the link to the Vtrol Discord server as well because they have staff who are ready to help you. Once you're in, just click the power plan button and select either the desktop or laptop power plan and you will notice an instant performance boost. Apart from that, there are 21 free tweaks as well, all with detailed descriptions about what exactly they do, as well as clear warnings for things you might need to watch out for. But if you don't really need the cleaning and debloating features, feel free to uninstall it from your computer or get the premium version because it includes every tweak you will ever need and you'll never need to watch another optimization video ever again. Earlier I said that I was just going to teach you how I got to 1500 FPS, and that's all it took. But if you want to boost your FPS for free, watch this video next for some optimizations that I didn't talk about in this video.